Hey, deserving listeners, Love is Blind, season six. Let's watch. Literally could happen anytime. Nine months from now, we got a little, you know, Amy Jr., John Jr. coming through. Yeah. That's something I'm, I'd be terrified of. Like, let's say hypothetically in one year, yeah. we get pregnant accidentally. Mm. I feel like, yeah, it would be a lot. The way they're talking, it's like contraception of any sort doesn't exist. <laughs> They seem to be choosing, they're, like, they're assuming that an unplanned pregnancy is going to happen. And we're not hearing any conversation from the two of them that even involves condoms. We're also not hearing from her saying that, well, if we uh, decide to make this a go, then I'm going to start considering going on the pill or something like that. You know, there's, Or I'm also not hearing, and he didn't mention that she has a medical condition that would prevent it, right? She, He wasn't saying that when he was talking to Laura. I could be forgetting that. But anyway, she is from Puerto Rico, right? Born in Puerto Rico, emigrated age five. So I assume that it's a Catholic thing, but let's look it up. Okay, so I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole regarding the research and the literature and I think what the consensus is that the Catholic authorities are generally against any sort of birth control, any sort of contraception, and they will say that intercourse is for procreation, and if you're preventing procreation, then it's against God. However, when you actually ask Catholics and ask the church itself about the use of any contraception pill, condoms, the vast majority of Catholics are similar to uh, other Christians and the general public in general. So that doesn't fit here. Like we could take care yeah. of a child, it just wouldn't be in the best ideal financial situation. And that's what's telling the pods, like, I don't want that period. Someone I was like in love with or like in a relationship with was almost always on birth control. Like that's how it was in the past. At least we're finding out that he is explicitly advocating that she that she take the pill. But that argument is not a good argument, and this is a little tip for y'all. So this is what we might call a triangulation. He is bringing in a bunch of people to try to mitigate or deal with the conflict, the tension that he has with Amy. He wants her, I think, to go on the pill, and she doesn't want to. And so as a way of trying to convince her, He's triangulating, instead of speaking from himself, he's triangulating these other people. Now, I don't doubt what he's saying. It's you know, quite common for people, if they're not wanting to have kids, to use the pill. But I think he's trying to make it seem like she's abnormal or strange or something. And it's just unfair. It doesn't make So don't do that and don't respond at, to others that are doing that as if they made a good point. It's not a good point. If you have an urge to do that, stop yourself and speak from your yourself. Speak from what you want and just stay there. You know, a lot of people will triangulate because they actually don't believe they have a leg to stand on regarding their own preferences. It's okay to say, I would like it if you go on the pill. You don't have to, but that would be my preference. You know, in this moment, she could say, yeah, I don't care what your previous girlfriends were doing. They're not from my culture or they're not me. They're not in my family. Uh, it's a, they can make their choices. I'm making mine. But if he said, I would like it because I think it would make it so much more convenient for us to be able to have sex and not worry about that and make you know better uh, planning for the future, we would have more control over our future. Uh, you know, he could just speak from what he wants and she couldn't debate with that, right? She can't say, that isn't true. She could say, I don't give a shit, <laughs> but she can't say that doesn't matter. Or something. Whereas, you know, when he triangulates to other people, she could say, that's irrelevant. Like that's how it was in the past. I think that's honestly like our roadblock. I think that's, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to get on birth control just yet. Um, I know I mentioned a vasectomy. Okay, I think she's about to say vasectomy. Is she about to say vasectomy? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but anyway, she just said, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to get on the birth control just yet. But is she about to say vasectomy? Because, 
I think they want to have kids. You, know, you can still, there's ways around it, right? You can bank your sperm beforehand. You can also reverse it, blah, 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 adopt. But is she about to say vasectomy? I think that's honestly like our roadblock. I think that's, mm. I don't know if I want to get on birth control just yet. Um, I know I mentioned a vasectomy. I know, I know. Oh, I know. And there is, it's always like an option too. Like it's not just like the girl's like job too. So like. Yeah, but generally speaking, <laughs> you know, uh, vasectomies are less reversible. I mean, sometimes they aren't reversible. They often are, but sometimes not. And with the pill, generally speaking, I'm not a physician. I can only speak as a lay person, but from my understanding, you know, when the time comes you want to start getting pregnant, you can stop taking pill. I understand that there can be complications, blah, 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 but. Like, I don't want to like make it seem like I'm saying like, like do this or like, ah, this is the only way I think like to do things because it's not. I feel like Johnny's fear about <laughs> the whole kid situation is like the biggest roadblock to intimacy. Roadblock to intimacy. Yeah, earlier she said, this is our roadblock. And I thought what she meant was roadblock to marriage. And now she's saying roadblock to intimacy, which also could be roadblock to marriage. Or maybe that's all she means is, well, then we can't be physical together as much as we want to be or something. Are you guys sexually intimate at this point? No. I don't think we're going to wait until, like, we're not, I don't think we're going to wait until marriage. And I, I'm just, I feel like Johnny's really scared. I don't know, I feel like using protection, like that's not enough for him. I've never been on birth control. Like I've had talks with my gynecologist. Wait, it sounds like using protection, which often people are using that word for condoms, isn't enough for him. Oh, well that, I don't know, that makes me feel a lot better, honestly. It sounds like they are using condoms. He just is worried that on average, it's not as effective at preventing uh, pregnancy as as the pill. Let's rewind that. Until marriage, and I, I'm just, I feel like Johnny's really scared. I don't know, I feel like using protection, like that's not enough for him. I've never been on birth control. Yeah, I'm getting chills. And maybe y'all knew this, <laughs> you probably did. <laughs> so, huh, okay, I, uh, he just wants to be really sure of that. That's interesting. Uh, well, he did talk about uh, he, you know, grew up in a small house, and he talked about I think referring to both of them, agreeing that they both grew up in I don't know if it, poverty is the right word, but not having money in their family, and I don't know if his anxiety is related to that. Sounds like it might be. In fact, he just said that. Or I don't know if I showed the clip, but he was just saying in this conversation that you know he has a plan to make sure that he isn't uh, financially constantly trying to keep up with the kids that are coming. He wants to be stable financially. He doesn't want to put his kids through what he went through when he was young. That, that's what he was saying. I would imagine most people would say, well, yeah, I mean, there's a chance with condoms that we'll get pregnant, but chances are pretty low. And if you know, we're pretty careful with it, you know, we can rest assured that things will be fine. And if we do happen to get pregnant, we are married and we do want to have kids. So maybe it's the universe's way of telling us now is the time. <laughs> you know, uh, for me and my little brother, uh, we have we were conceived under kind of a, a similar process. My mom in 1970 was having um, complications with her IUD. And you know, you just imagine IUDs in 1970. <laughs> and she went to the physician and the physician took it out and said uh, to my mom, well, we'll leave it out for a month, I think, and uh, give it some time to heal and rest and, and, and come back in a month, I'll put it back in. And my mom said to the doctor, well, what are we and my husband supposed to do for that for this month? And I think the doctor said, ah, it, it's unlikely that you'll get pregnant. Well, that was me. <laughs> and then my little brother uh, apparently was conceived with the IUD in and, and my mom had to go in and have the IUD removed carefully to preserve the pregnancy. My point is, is that 
sometimes the universe wanted me to be here. <laughs> or my parents can't keep their hands off each other. One of, I don't know which one it is. Like I've had talks with my gynecologist. It is ideal to be on birth control because I have to constantly get infusions. I am anemic. It would be ideal to do that, but I like how regular everything is in my system. I don't want to alter anything. And so it is a lot as a- Interesting. Okay, so it sounds like there is at least an indirect medical concern, but at the very least, she just likes the way it feels. Yeah, okay. I'm glad. Can we lead with that information? <laughs> okay, so we didn't hear anything about religion. It's just how she feels. We don't even know if she's Catholic. Okay, yeah, because from the beginning, I, I've been wondering, like, what's, where's the landscape? Is it, a, is it a rational, personal choice from one's own agency, and they have the information? Or is there misinformation, or is this something that's being imposed on them? But I had it all wrong, <laughs> or, or I didn't have it wrong. I didn't know what it was. I kept wondering, but anyway. <laughs> but it, it, it just didn't seem likely, given the way they were talking, that they were using condoms, right? So not only are they using condoms, but uh, her her reasons have to, have to do, well, with what she said. I, I don't know all that entails what she means by that, but okay. Okay, well, so so what it sounds like is she's saying this is a roadblock. Because, and it's interesting she's not wording it about him. She's, she's not saying, and that is commendable for her um, and not so commendable for him because, you know, he's been triangulating. He's been like, even though he, they're using condoms, he's like really, you know, trying to get her to, to take the pill, she's saying everyone I was with in the past used the pill, uh, because she could easily say, your anxiety is out of control, <laughs> or your anxiety is excessive. Everyone I was with was fine using condoms and taking the very minimal risk that there is when you use it properly. So she could say that, but she's not. And instead, she's saying this is, a, this is a roadblock. It's pretty healthy to not be pointed, you know, it's just like, this is a roadblock between the two of us instead of there's something wrong with you, even though he was kind of doing that to her, you know, because triangulating, right? So, yeah, a and they haven't had sex yet. So, right, she just said they haven't. So I guess maybe they've talked. If we did have sex, he's like, well, of course I would wear a condom, but you have to also be in the pill. Yeah, okay. Glad they're talking about it. And if this is a deal breaker, then, but it would be such a bummer if it was a deal breaker, in my opinion, but each of their own. I think too soon. I think that's like our main roadblock right now. And I mm. think that's something that like we have to, yeah. you know. I didn't think it was this big of a deal to him. There's a lot of fears. There's a lot of fears that exist. Um, yeah, I think that's in line with what I think has been happening that she thinks his fear is excessive, that she thinks that condoms are pretty effective and should be enough. I think she, but she's avoiding speaking directly and um, alienating him or outing him or something, which, which is good. Um, well, I guess it's good, at least to the public. I would hope that in person, in a, at least at this point anyway, she would say, hey, you can make your own choices about this for sure. And if it's a no-go for you to have sex with just a condom, then that's your choice. I also want to say, I think your fears are excessive. I, I think it's pretty unlikely. Let's look at the research together. And I think on the very off chance that is one of those few percentile um, situations, then not... Not ideal, but you know we'll we'll figure out a way together. And what's the fear for you there? You know, what is it that is dire for you? You know, because I'm guessing based on the way he was saying talking that he would say, well, I worry that uh, essentially, if you dig down deep enough, I I wonder if he's worried that he's going to fail as a as a parent and a breadwinner, and that 
his children will suffer in the same ways that he did. You know, because not having a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean that your children are going to suffer. But anyway, so I, I wonder deep down what it is. Having said all that, you know, of course, if someone wants to be absolutely sure, it's like, I, you know, for my own personal reasons, I just don't want to have a pregnancy before I am ready. Call me weird. Absolutely. If, if, if that's, if at the end of the day, that that's, that's it. But I wonder if, if there's an inroad there and a discovery for him of, oh, I guess I am still hurting from my past and I'm overly focused on this one detail and I'm jeopardizing our relationship. Now, it's also possible that they're totally fine uh, without intercourse. You know, there's a lot you can do, <laughs> a lot of enjoyable things. For some people, it's just as good, if not better. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't end sex or intimacy for sure. Um, and then I guess they wait five years to actually, you know, have intercourse. But because they seem to be pretty well bonded and they get along pretty well, kind of a non-issue. I think it's one of those things that we have to like research mm. and kind of figure out a solution pretty soon yes. before the wedding. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just think it's one of those things that we need to research, meaning I don't know if you understand the statistics. <laughs> and then also, uh, and we ain't getting married unless we've done the deed. So uh, let's figure this out soon. <laughs> now, I don't know if she means I, I don't want to get married. I don't want to buy a car that I haven't test drived, <laughs> test driven. Or if she's saying I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm horny <laughs> or both. I don't know. I don't know what she's saying exactly, but yeah. But I wonder, I mean, Johnny doesn't seem like someone that doesn't understand things, but maybe he doesn't. I just wish I were there because I'd really want to know from him. I'd really want to ask him like, what is the fear? And maybe I would say, okay, you know, that there's nothing to say about that. I, I value that. It's, it's not the fear that I would have, but, um, but it's your life. And absolutely, you have the right to live your life like that and to uh, focus on that and to um, emphasize those things. Or would I hear things like some kind of trauma, some kind of bullying, some kind of wrong lesson that he learned when he was a kid that is being rigidly held on to. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.